Ashley Brock Green, Nora Roberts book. <clears throat> sea swept, not sea swept. Rising tides, chapter thirteen. If you were going to have to work over a long holiday weekend, Philip figured it might as well be at something fun. He loved his job. What was advertising anyway? But a knowledge of people and of which b buttons to push to nudge them into opening their wallets. It was, he often thought, an accepted, creative, even expected twist on picking those wallets. For a man who had spent the first half of his life as a thief, it was the perfect career. On this day before the celebration of Americans' independence, he put his... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. He put his skills to use in the boatyard, smoozing a potential client. He much preferred to it to manual labor. You'll forgive the surroundings. Philip waved a well manicured hand, encompassing the enormous space, the exposed rafters and hanging lights, the yet to be painted walls, and scoured scarred floors my brothers and i believe putting our efforts into the product and keeping our overhead minimum those are benefits that we pass along to our clients at which time philip thought they had exactly one with another in the box and this one nibbling at the line hmm Jonathan Kraft rubbed his chin. He was in his mid-thirties and fortunate enough to be a fourth-generation member of the pharmaceutical Krafts. Since his great-grandfather's humble beginnings as a storefront pharmacist in Boston, his family had built and expanded an empire on buffeted, buffered aspirin and androlistics. It allowed Jonathan to indulge in his great love of sailing. He was tall, fit, tan. His hair was mink brown and perfectly styled to showcase his square jaw, handsome face. He wore buff colored chinos, a navy cotton shirt, and a well broken in top slider. Sliders. His watch was Rolex. His belt hand tooled Italian leather. His belt hand tooled Italian leather. He looked exactly like what he was a privileged, wealthy man with a love of the outdoors. You've only been in business a few months. Officially, Philip said with a flashing smile. His hair is rich, deep bronze, styled to make the most of a face that the angels had gifted with an extra kiss of pure male beauty. He wore fashionable faded Levi's, a green cotton shirt, and an olive drab super ghast. His eyes were shrewd, his smile charming. He looked exactly like what he'd made himself into, a sophisticated urbanite with an affection for fashion in the sea. We've built or worked on teams that built a number of boats over the years. Smoothly, he guided Jonathan toward the frame sketches hanging on the wall. Seth's artwork was displayed rustically as Philip felt suited the albance of the traditional boatyard. My brother Ethan Skipjack, one of the handful that still goes on their sail every winter to dredge for oysters in the Chesapeake. She'd had over ten years in service. She's a beauty. Jonathan's face turned dreamy. Philip had suspected it would. However, a man chose to pick wallets, he had to gauge his marks. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. I'm sure we can arrange that. He let Jonathan linger before nudging him gently along. Now, you may recognize this one. He indicated the drawing of a slick racing skiff. The circuit. My brother Cameron was involved with both her design and her construction. And she beat my Laureen, Laureen to the finish line two years running. Jonathan grimaced good naturedly. Of course, Cam was leading the team. He knows his boats. Philip heard the buzz of a drill from where Cameron worked bellow decks. He intended to bring Cam into this shortly. The slope currently under construction is primary Ethan's design, though Cam added some points. We've dedicated we're dedicated to serving the client's needs and wishes. He led Jonathan over to where Seth continued his hall sanding. Ethan stood on deck attending the rube rails he wanted speed stability and some luxuries philip knew the hall was a brilliant show of smooth lap construction he put in plenty of sweaty hours on it himself she's built for show as well as function teak from stem to stern as the client's direction he added noting knocking his knuckles cheerfully against the hall philip wiggled his bros at easing recognizing the signal easing put back put 
bid back a sigh. He knew he was going to hate this part, but Philip had pointed out that it was good business to bring the potential client into the fold. The joints are wedged and married without glue. Ethan rolled his shoulders, feeling as though he was given an oral skull report. He always hated them. We figured if the old-time boat builders could make a joint last a century or so without glue, so could we. And I've seen too many glue joints fail. Hmm. Balance it said again, and he took a breath. The hulls cocked in the traditional way. Stra stranded cotton. Planking's not tight wood to wood on the inside. We rolled two strands of cotton in most of the seams. Hardly needed the mallet. Then we paid them with standard seam components. Jonathan hummed again. He had only a vague idea what Ethan was talking about. He sailed boats. Boats that he bought fresh and clean and it finished, but he liked the sound of it. She appears to be fine type boat. Pretty pleasure craft. I'll be looking for speed and efficiency as well as aesthetics. Well, we'll see that you get it. Philip smiled broadly, waving a finger at Ethan, while Jonathan said, It's time to pull up the next round. Ethan added the little bell decks when, where Cam was fitting out the framing for an under the bunk cabin. Cabinet. Your turn up there, he muttered. Phil got him on the string. I couldn't tell by me. I gave my little speech, and the guy just nodded and made noises. You asked me, he didn't know what the hell I was talking about. Of course he doesn't. Jonathan hires people to work to worry about maintaining his boats. He's never scraped a hull or replanked a deck in his life. Cam rose from his crouch, working the stiffness out of his knees. He's the kind of guy who drives a Maserati without knowing dick about engines. But he'd have been impressed with your sultry waterman's draw and rugged good looks. As Ethan, as Ethan gave a snoring laugh, Cam elbowed past him. I'll go give him my push. He climbed topside and managed to look incredibly surprised to see Jonathan on board studying the gall wings. Hey, Graft, how's it going? Fast and fair. Fast and far. With genuine pleasure, Jonathan shook Cam's hand. I'm surprised when he didn't show at the San Diego regatta this year. Got myself married. So I hear. Congratulations, and now you're building boats instead of racing? It won't count me out of racing entirely. I'm torn with building myself a cat over the winter if business slacks off any. Keep him busy. Word gets out. Cam said easily. A bow by Quinn means quality. Smart people want the best when they can afford it. He grinned. Fast and slick. Can you afford it? I'm thinking of a cat myself. Your brother must have mentioned it. Yeah, he ran by me. You want light, fast, and tight. Ethan and I have been modifying the sign for what I had in mind for mine. That's bullshit, says Weber the Law. Only loud enough for Philip here. Sure. Philip winked at him, but it's class A bullshit. He leaned closer. He leaned a little closer to Seth as Cam and Jonathan latched into the lure of racing a cat boat. Cam knows that while the guy likes him fine, he's competitive. Never beat Cam in a head-to-head -head race, so. So, he paid buckets of money to have Cam build him a boat that not even Cam could beat. There you go. Proud Philip gave Seth a light punch on the shoulder. You got a quick brain there. Keep using it. And you won't be spending all your time sanding halls. Now, kid, watch the master. He straightened, beamed up. I'd be happy to show you the drawings, Jonathan. Why don't we go into my office? I'll dig them out for you. Wouldn't mind taking a look. Jonathan climbed down. The problem is, I need this boat steelworthy by March 1st. I'll need time to test her, work out the kinks, break her in before the summer, summer races. March 1st. Philip pursed his lips, then shook his head. That might be a problem. Quality comes first here. It takes time to build a champion. I'll look over our schedule. He added, dropping an arm over Jonathan's shoulder as they walked. We'll see what we can work out, but the contract's already in place, and the worksheets tell me May is the soonest we can deliver the top quality product you expect and deserve. That's not going to give me much time to get feel of her, Jonathan complained. Believe me, Jonathan, a boat by coin is going to feel fine. Just fine. He added, glancing back at his brothers with a quick hit wolfish grin. Boy, nice Jonathan inside the office. He'll buy us till May. Cam decided and easing him. Or he'll make it April and skin the poor bastard for a bonus. Either way, Cam clapped a hand on Ethan's shoulder. We're going to have ourselves another contract by the end of the, by the, end of the day. Below Seth snorted. Shit, he'll wrap it up by lunchtime. The guy's toast. <laughs> Cam tucked his tongue in cheek. 
Two Glock Sonus. Noon, Seth said, peering up at him. Two bucks. Sure, I could use the money, you know. Cam said as he dug out his wallet. Before you came along and ruined my life, I just want a bundle with Monte Carlo. So I sneered to him like that. This ain't Monte Carlo, you're telling me. Passed the bills over, then winced when he saw his wife coming to him. Court, social worker hadn't in. She's not going to prove of miners gambling. Hey, I won. Seth pointed out, but he stopped the bills in his pockets. You bring any food? He asked Anna. Oh, no, I didn't. Sorry. Distracted, she dragged a hand through her hair. There was a sick ball in the pit of her stomach that she did her best to ignore. She smiled. A cover of lips that didn't quite manage to reach eyes. Didn't you all pack lunch? Yeah, but you usually bring something better. This time I've been pretty tied up putting food together for the picnic tomorrow. She ran a hand over his head. Then left it lying on his shoulder. She needed the contact. I just thought I'd take a break and see how things were going around here. Bill just nailed this rich guy for a ton of money. Good, that's good, she said absently. Then we should celebrate. Why don't I spring for ice cream? You think you can handle picking up some hot fudge sundaes at Crawford? Yeah, his face split into a grin. I can handle it. She dragged money out of her purse, hoping he didn't notice that her hands were quite steady. No nuts on mine, remember? Sure, I got it. I'm gone. He raced out, and she watched him hard sick. What is it, Anna? Can't put his hands on her shoulders. Turned her to face him. What happened? Give me a minute. I broke records getting here, and I need some time to settle. She blew out her breath. Drew one in. I felt marginally steadier. Go get your brothers, Cam. Okay. But he lingered, rubbing his hands over her shoulders. It was rare for her to look so shaken. Whatever it is, we'll fix it. He walked to the cargo doors, where Ethan and Phil stood outside arguing you know, for baseball. Something's up, he said. Anna's here. She sent Seth off. She's upset. She was standing by a workbench with one of Seth's drawing books open. When they came in, made her eyes sting to see her own face carefully, skillfully sketched by the young boy's hand. He'd been more than a case file almost from the start. And now he was hers as much as Ethan's Phillips as much as Ethan and Philip were hers family. She couldn't stand to think that anything or anyone would hurt her family. But she was steadier when she turned, scanned the quiet and concerned faces of the men who'd become essential to her life. This came in today's mail. Her hand no longer trembled as she reached into her purse and pulled out the letter. It's addressed to the Quins, just the Quins, she repeated, from Gloria de Lotner. I opened it. I thought it best. And well, my name's Quinn now, too, she offered it to Cam. Say nothing. Took out the single sheet of lined paper and passed the envelope to Philip. She mailed it from Virginia Beach, Philip murmured. We lost her in North Carolina. She's sticking with the beaches, but coming north. What does she want? Ethan stuffed hands that had curled his fists into his pockets. A low, simmering rage was already pumping through his blood. What'd you expect? Cam answered shortly. Money. Dear Quinns, Cam read, I heard how Ray died. It's too bad. You might know that Ray and me had an agreement. I think you'll want to make good on it since you're keeping Seth. I guess he's pretty settled in there and in that night's house. I miss him. You don't know what a sacrifice it was for me to give him up to Ray, but I wonder what was best for my only son. You ought to have your violin. Philip muttered to Ethan. I knew Ray would be good to him, Cam continued. He did right by the three of you, and says God is blood. He stopped reading for a moment. There it was, in black and white. Truth or a lie, he looked up at his brother. That's to deal with later. Ethan felt the ache begin around his heart and moved on in it to squeeze, but he shook his head. Read the rest. Okay. Ray knew how much it hurt me to part with the boy, so he held me out. But now that he's gone, I'm starting to worry that it might not be the best place for Seth there with you. I'm willing to be convinced. If you're set on keeping him, you'll keep up Ray's promise of helping me out. I'm going to need some money, like a sign that you're 
Got good intentions. 5,000. You can send it to me. Care of general delivery here in Virginia Beach. I'll give you two weeks. Figuring the mail is kind of unreliable. If I don't hear back, I'll know you don't really want the kid. I'll come and get him. He must be missing me something awful. Be sure to tell him his mom loves him. I might be seeing him real soon. Bitch! It was Philip's first comment. She's tusting us out. Trying her hand at a little more blackmail to see if we'll fall for it the way Dad did. You can't! Anna put a hand on Cam's arm, felt a quiver of rage. You have to let the system work. You have to trust me to see that she doesn't do this in court. Anna. Cam shoved the letter into the hand Ethan had held out. We're not going to put that boy through a court case. Not if there's another way. You don't mean to pay her, Cam. I don't mean to pay her one fucking cent. He proud away. He proud away, struggling to fight off fury. She thinks he's got us by the balls, but she's wrong. We're not one lone old man. He rolled back, eyes blazing, eyes blazing. Let's see her try to get through us to lay hands on Seth. She was pretty careful how she worded things. Ethan commented as he scanned the letter again. Doesn't make less of a threat, but she's not stupid. She's greedy. Philip put it in. Philip put in. If she's already angling for more after what Dad paid her, she's testing the depth of the well. She sees you as her source now, Anna Green, and there's no predict predicting what she'll do if she knows the source isn't easily tapped. Pausing, she pressed her fingers to her temples, ordering herself to think. If she comes back into the county and attempts to make contact with Seth, I can have her detained, legally barred, at least temporary, from direct contact with him. You have guardianship, and Seth is old enough to speak for himself. The question is, will he? She lifted her hands, frustrated, let them fall. He's told me very little about his life before he came here. I'll need specifics in order to block any custody attempt on her part. He doesn't want her, and she doesn't want him. Either resisted, barely crumbling the letter into a ball, unless he's worth a piece of another fix. She let her John's try for him. Anna shifted to face him, kept her eyes calm and direct when he said, Did Seth tell you that? Did he tell you there had been sexual abuse and she's been a party to it? He told me enough. Ethan's mouth went hard and grim, and it's up to him if he wants to tell anybody else and see, see it put into some goddamn counter report. Ethan. Anna laid a hand on his rigid arm. I love him, too. I only want to help him. I know. He stepped back because the anger was too fierce, too likely to spew on everyone. I'm sorry, but there are times the system makes it worse. It makes you feel like you're being swallowed up. He struggled to block out the echo pain. He's going to know he's got us with or without any system to stand with him. The lawyer needs to know she made contact. Philip took the letter from Ethan, folded it, and tucked it back in the envelope. And we have to decide how we're going to handle it. My first impulse is to go down to Victoria, Virginia Beach, dig her out of her hole, and tell her in a way she'd understand just what's going to happen to her if she comes within 50 miles of set. Threatening her won't help, Anna began, but it would feel damn good. Cam bared his teeth. Let me do it. <clears throat> On the other hand, I think it might be very efficient. It'd look very good if it comes to a legal battle. If our pal Gloria got an official letter from Seth's caseworker outlining the status, the options, and the conclusions reached, contacting or attempting to contact a birth mother who may be rethinking giving up custody of her child, the child who's in your files would come within the parameters of your job, wouldn't it, Anna? She molded over, knowing it was a fine line and extra balance would be required to walk it. I can't threaten her, but I may be able to make her stop and think. But the big question is, do we tell Seth? He's afraid of her, Cam murmured. Cam murmured. Damn it, the kid's just starting to relax, to believe he's safe. Why do we have to tell him she's poking her finger back into his life? Because he's got a right to know. Ethan spoke quietly. His temper had leveled off, and he was able to think clearly again. He's got a right to know what he might have to fight. If you know what's after you, you've got a better chance. Because, he added, the letter was addressed to Quinn's. He's one of us. I'd rather burn it, Philip muttered. But you're right. We'll all tell him, Cam agreed. I'd like to do the talking. Both Cam and Philip stared at Ethan. You would? He might take it easier from me. He looked over as Seth came through the door. So let's find out. 
Mother Crawford put on extra hot fudge. Man, she just poured it on. There's about a million tourists up on the waterfront, and his excited chatter trailed off. His eyes went from gleeful to wary. Inside his chest, his heart began to drum. He recognized trouble, bad trouble. It had his own smell. What's the deal? Anna took the large bag from him, turned to see, set the plastic-topped dishes of ice cream out. Why don't you sit down, Seth? I don't need to sit down. It was easier to get a head start running if you were already on your feet. There was a letter that came today. It was best Ethan knew. If hard news was delivered fast and clean from your mother. She's here! The fear was back, sharp as a scalpel. Seth took one quick stop and step in retreat, going stiff as a board when Cam laid a hand on her. No, she's not here, but we are. You remember that. Seth shuddered once, then planted his feet. Why the hell did, what the hell did she want? Why is she sending letters? I don't want to see it. Then you don't have to, Anna assured him. Why don't you let Ethan explain? Then we'll talk about what we're going to do. She knows Ray's dead. He's been, I got a figure she's known right along, but she's taking her time getting to it. He gave her money, Seth swallowed her to gulp down the fear. Quins weren't afraid, he told himself. They weren't afraid of anything. She took off. She doesn't care that he's dead. I don't suppose she does, but she's open for more money. That's what the letter's about. She wants me to pay her? Fresh and bright fear exploded in Seth's brain. I don't have any money. What's she writing to me for money for? She wasn't writing to you. Seth took a ragged breath, concentrated, concentrated on Ethan's face. The eyes were clear and patient, the mouth firm and serious. Ethan knew was all he could think. Ethan knew what it was like. He knew about the rooms, the smells, the fat hands in the dark. She wants you to pay her. Part of him wanted him to beg them to do it. To pay her whatever she wanted. He would swear in blood that he would do anything they asked of him for the rest of his life to honor the debt. But he couldn't. Not with Ethan watching him and waiting and knowing. If you do, she'll just come back for more. She'll keep coming back. Seth rubbed the back of a sweaty hand over his mouth. As long as she knows where I am, she'll keep coming back. I have to go to someplace else. Someplace where she can't find me. You're not going anywhere. Ethan crouched so they were closer to Ilo, and she's not going to get any more money. She's not going to win. Slowly, mechanically, Seth shook his head back. You don't know her? I know pieces of her. She's smart enough to know we're set on keeping you with us. That we love you enough to pay. He saw the flash of emotion in Seth's eyes before they fully lowered it to him. And we would pay. And that would end it. And that would ease things. But it won't end or ease it. It's like you said, she just come back. What are you going to do? That's what we're all going to do now. All of us. He said and waited for Seth's gaze to set on his face again. We'll go on as we've been going on, mostly. Phil will talk to the lawyer, so we got that end covered. You tell him I'm not going back with her. Seth said furiously, shooting a desperate look at Philip. No matter what, I'm not going back. I'll tell him. Anna's going to write her a letter. Ethan continued. What kind of letter? A smart one. Ethan said with a hint of a smile. With all those $50 words. And that official sounds and stuff. She'll be doing it as your caseworker to let Gloria know we've got the system and the law behind us. Am I giving her pause to think? She hates social workers, Seth put in. Good! For the first time in more than an hour, Anna smiled and meant it. People who hate something are usually afraid of it, too. One thing that would help, Seth, if you can do it. He turned back to Ethan. What do I have to do? If you could talk to Anna. Tell her how things were before. As close to exactly as you can manage. I don't want to talk about it. It's over. I'm not coming back. I know. <laughs> Gently, Ethan put his hands on Seth's trembling shoulders. And I know talking about it can be almost like being there again. It took me a long time to be able to tell my mother to tell Stella. To say all of it out loud. Even though she already knew most of it started to get better after that, and it helped her and Ray get the legal crap handled. Seth thought of high noon, of heroes, of Ethan. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, it's the right thing. Will you come with me? Sure. Ethan rose out on hand. 
we'll go home and talk it through. End of chapter 13.